All right, looks like we're live. We are live, we are live. I don't see anything, how do we? Uh, it's all my second time going live, so I don't see anybody. How do we do this? Okay, all right, now, there we go. All right, there we go. Okay, okay, I see some people now. Check it in, check it in. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the love. Actually, I was, uh, I did a podcast today with uh, a CEO of GovShop Public Spend Forum. And uh, it was really good. Like, we really went over some stuff. Uh, love to share it with everybody out there. You know, this guy is, I mean, they're doing some crazy stuff. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How are you? What's up? MJ Global. What's up? Truck and Justin. Kimberly Yates. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate you. We uh, we work hard, man. We're putting out some stuff. You know, it's funny, though, just even like for me, seeing some of that content that they put out on, on IG, I, I I haven't seen it in a minute either, right? So like, you know, I'm going back and I'm I'm like, wow, this stuff is perfect. Like this, you know, remember I did the interviews, but I did those interviews, some of them last year. And, you know, you just, I'm doing, sometimes I'm doing two in a day or three interviews in a day. <clears throat> and by the way, just for everyone out there, Mondays are typically my podcast days. So uh, like on Mondays, I'll crank out, you know, depending upon how many people Maria sets up for me, two or three guests I'll interview at the same time. So, you know, sometimes uh, it does kind of like rum, rum come together, but nevertheless, we, um, the, the, I mean, it's really good content. It's good stuff. And, it, you know, my name is getting out there. A lot of people reaching out to us, people starting to recommend us guests. And I've been talking to a lot of executives, CEOs of really large organizations. And the guy who I met with today, Raj, and Raj comes from one of those, you know, Booz Allen Hamilton consulting firm, started his own consulting business. And then uh, he saw kind of like some of the, the, the areas in the market where they needed some help. He formed his own business. He blew that up. And he actually was responsible for, for department, DOD contracting wide, like the acquisition strategy for the Department of Defense. So what's up, Nikki? What's up, MJ, Riley? So yeah, but no, we, uh, we had some good guests. And like he just, he just dropped a lot of jewels. He built this huge marketplace, raised a bunch of venture capital money. And now, in fact, he was telling me the re we like we were on a podcast at two o'clock, and he literally he said like Eric I got a dead stop at three o'clock because he has to meet with the state of Arizona's governor about helping them with their PPE efforts because some of these states and like he's their 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 new platform is being used by the Defense Department and by the Governors Association of all of the states to help them with their PPE efforts because a lot of states have been taken advantage of. And even now we think, kind of like what Trevor Noah said, we would think that by now they would have got it right. Like you would think that the states, they would have figured this out back in March, right? About this whole PPE thing and they're still still struggling with it. So I uh, was on the phone with him and then he was like, had to go phone me to go talk to the governors over in Arizona. So it's just Man, I'm in a good space right now. I'm just really in a good space. And, you know, just here sharing, giving back. Looks like somebody wants to chat. Let me see how I do this. Hold on. Go live. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Who wants to go live? Come on down. waiting free throw Frank 
<laughs> yeah, no, you know, you know, what's really cool also is how a lot of people from my past, right, they're starting to come around and reaching out as well. And they're, they're like, it's funny, because a lot of people don't, they didn't know what I did, right? People are like, what does this guy do, man? This guy is like, you know, no one really know what I did. Um, so I, I like, I guess until I start really posting and sharing stuff. But you got to remember, when you do work for the government, especially the federal government, you're not really, like, so even some of my podcast guests, some of the things that we do are top secret. Not my stuff is not top secret, but I work in secret facilities. So you can't always share everything that you do. You can't always talk about it. And so it's hard to convey to people, like, what do you do? It's almost like being like secret service or something, right? Um, I've got friends who have contracts in DC, in the Pentagon, and they employ people and they don't even know what those people do because they're not allowed to go into those facilities. So they don't even know like what those people do. And it's the same thing like me, when I, like when we built hangars and stuff, like those are secure areas. They literally make, uh, like for example, when you're working on a flight line or something near on a government installation, they'll make like a safe zone around you where you work at. And then you can't leave that safe zone. Like the whole, like it literally says on the ground, lethal force can be used if you cross this line. So it's a lot of stuff that we can't talk about on here. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's finally in this, this way, this manner now, I get to share with everybody what we do and put it out there. And, and hopefully like some of, some people are benefiting from it. Right. So I, I hear a lot of good things from everybody out there, but definitely, I guess that person, I was trying to connect with them. So, but listen, if anybody has any questions, you know, jump on, let's chat, let's talk. I, I mean, I welcome it. I know um, I actually had something that I want to talk about, but I'd rather talk to someone out there to connect with me. You know, in my, uh, in my private group last night, people were asking me, how do you start? I wrote it down, so I'm reading it, right, what I wrote down. Good stuff, Frank. I, uh, that's good looking out. Um, I wrote, they asked me, how do you start a business with no employees? Someone asked me that question. And they said, Eric, how did you get started? Like, when you don't have any employees, you know, how did you get started? And so I thought that would be a good topic, kind of like to talk about tonight. But again, if anybody else has anything, Dexter, matter of fact, yo, Dexter, Maria just brought your name up today. Maria, were we not just talking about Dexter today? We literally was. She saw an opportunity for you. And uh, it's so funny that you're on tonight. Like Maria just brought up your, like we just looked at something today that she, uh, that made sense. See, Maria's waving at you, Dex. So yeah, we just talked about you. Maria, jump, listen. I don't know if you're in a place where you can, you can jump on and, and just like, just share that real quick, what you saw that makes sense for Dexter, Maria. Like, you know, so um, until you guys hit me up to join, I'll continue on that topic. So people are like asking me, what's about Boogie? Yeah, you, MJ. You know, what, what, what was the opportunity that we saw with Dexter? You know, you always got to start off. People are shy. Oscar. Hey, guys. I can't see you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, you have to got to start off. Like, people get shy and stuff. Yeah, and but I look tired today. I was at a job, so. Oh, okay. What were we talking about for Dexter? So, today? I threw Beta Sam because of that podcast one. And yeah. then right here in Miami, which is yard uh, there is with the FAA there's a solicitation to just to remove I guess they're tearing down a child care facility and mm -hmm. they just dispose of that waste mm -hmm. so all have to do is carry all their junk to the waste site that's it it's okay uh, yeah I knew it was something I was like we and just I, talked about him today you're like call your boy he <laughs> I was like, what's his name? I said, no, it starts with a D. I was like, what's his name? And no, it starts with a D. But by the way, so this is actually a funny story because 
it's the same thing when you're out trying to get contracts. If you don't stay on the top of people's mind, when something comes up an opportunity, they're not going to remember you. So this is a really good point. Like, you know, just kind of stay on top of people's mind because when an opportunity comes around, right, they're like, oh, wait a second, don't I have someone? And it's like the same thing, even with me, one of our students sent us the solicitation for a podcast. And so like, I mean, I'm not always checking stuff and monitoring it, but someone sent it to me. It was like, hey, Eric, you know, let's go after this and, and put it in two bids. So I was like, yeah, sure, for sure. And, then, and so that's what we did. Ida, because um, they sent us that podcast one and then somebody else sent us the women set aside one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone else sent us the set aside, but right. I started looking and yeah. like, you said people have to stay in the top of your head. But um, for those that don't know, the way that we met Dexter was our Miami meet and greet. Right. So right. he took his, away from his Saturday night and came out and to just That's true. Hi. So he, yeah, no, no, that's, that's real stuff. Impressive. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. That was good. What's up, Colin? Yeah, no, no, that's true. That's good stuff. So um, I'm going to get off so somebody else could probably jump on. All right. That's good. We'll see. Somebody said I saw that I'm sorry today. That's good. No, no, look. You said we need to chat. We're here. Let's chat. Jump on right now. Let's chat. I don't. I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I create so many opportunities for people to talk. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. It really, it's much easier for me to talk on these forums or like what I do this month on Fridays because, and I'll just explain it to everyone. Honestly, if I spend an hour or 30 minutes talking with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, that takes away from content that I can create for thousands of people. And so that's just kind of the way I look at my time now. Rather than just, you know, basically saying, hey, I'm going to spend one-on-one -on -one with this person, um, it just takes away from me creating content that's going, you know, one video that will, you know, thousands of people will answer that question. So the, the only way that I really spend time with people one-on-one -on -one is if it's, they agree to record it, the session. So you have to agree to have it recorded so that I could chop it up and share it with people later. Um, or um, spend a lot of money. Right. So like even on my clarity calls, I just raised up my rates to a thousand bucks an hour and like hoping like, OK, no one's going to call me. And of course, people still call. Right. So let me uh, let me add you on. Hold on. Hey, hey, what's, what's up? up? You tell me. Dexter, <laughs> so I am LaShonda Bracy, the government contracting guru. And nice. I just, I just got off the call with my one-on-one -on -one student. So I'm doing an eight-week class. But you and I, you've been on my radar. I think um, one of my buddies was on a couple weeks ago. Uh, Laura, mm. on your podcast. Lori. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I keep saying I've, I've been following you and catching your stuff. I was like, yeah, we definitely need to connect. Oh, I'm, here, I'm here in the D.C. area, so. Oh, you right there where all the action's at. That's right. Send me a now, contract. Now, wait, now <laughs> it's that low-hanging fruit now. Come on. Send me a contract. You know, COVID, <laughs> nobody spent their money. Everybody trying to spend it now. They trying to spend it. They just spend it. Not trying, they spending fruit. it. They're not trying. They're spending it. Right. That's them simplified acquisitions and them, you know, the micro yeah. purchases. No, no, no. They're doing it. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad to see a familiar face. I, you know, someone that looked like me on the other end doing something good, positive. That's great. I love it. I oh, love yeah. it. For your uh, listeners, I'm actually doing a women of color in government contracting summit in a couple weeks. So. Um, I've got Dang. Folks, folks you beat me to it. That will be on, huh? You beat me to that. Yeah, it's, I want uh, I want to do a women of color summit. You know what? <laughs> I did. Well, Ask Maria. Huh? I say Ask like Maria. so. No, nah, you got, probably look. go ahead. Already I'm in the works. I've got um, Department of Treasury speaking and a couple okay. other agencies. Oh. So yeah, I'll definitely keep you posted. Good stuff. No, no, yeah, keep, us, keep us in the loop. I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> tell all your tell all your small businesses just my little tidbit. 
lot of our business. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, love. Didn't get PPE money because our people don't have bank accounts. That's all I got. Mm. I don't know if it's you or me where your signal's going out. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. You said a lot of a lot of us didn't get PPE because what? Can't hear you. Uh can you guys hear? I can't hear. Okay. Text it. Hold up. So can somebody is it just me? Can you guys hear me? Her signal's out. Okay. That's what I figured. Because I can't hear her. We can't hear you, love. You got all this good information. We can't even hear you. Oh, there it is. LaShonda Bracey. All right. Okay. LaShonda Bracey is her name. LaShonda, type in the name of your organization so we can follow you. Okay, so you guys can hear me. LaShonda, we can't hear you. Uh-oh. I think LaShonda is having signal issues. Uh, remove her real quick and uh we'll get it back on but she said they're having a women of color event coming up she's gonna reach out to us so yeah i disconnected her hopefully she'll try to request to come back on stacy wants to join i i would love to have stacy on i could see we could we can't see you anymore lashonda we can hear you yeah i'll bring stacy stacy let me uh let's talk to stacy Let me see. Oh, okay. No, Marie, she's not ready. <laughs> What's up? So, no, but at least she's here. Welcome, Stacy. Um, so, Lashana said she's having an event coming up, and she was telling us about some of the speakers that are going to be at her Women of Color event that's coming up soon. So um, we will get more information and we will share it. Oh, okay. No, no worries. Listen, thank you for at least coming on and visiting us. In fact, Lori was on last week. We're going to do this every Wednesday. So um, if you get a chance, anytime you get a chance, come on. We'd love to say hi and tell everybody out there to speak with us. So that's good. But at least thank you for, for coming in and, and watching and seeing what we do. So that's great. Where, Lashonda, where are you at? Where is she at? She was talking about, she said that, I know she was saying about the PPE, a lot of small businesses that did not receive the PPE was because they did not have, oh, hold on. There she is. All right, we're waiting for her. Okay. All right, can you hear me now? Perfect. See, the gods didn't want us talking about government contracting. Oh, you know, what? The color, you know, you know how that is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but go ahead, finish, finish it because someone just they go ahead. So tell us what you were saying about the PPE now. So I was saying a lot of minority businesses did not get the PPE because small businesses didn't do their due diligence and have bank accounts, business bank, gotcha. bank accounts. Okay. That was a large, a large uh, folks that got rejected. Just FYI. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and then, yeah. so you put your name in there. What, what's the name of the organization? Your organization. Um, I've got. I'm, 
My organization, I'm, mm -hmm. I own HealthWorks, which, which is an IT training and course development company. Okay. But I okay. also own LashondaBracy.com, where I help small businesses make sure they're registered properly and identify yep. the agencies they should be doing their business with. Okay. No, we want to we want to plug you. you know? That's right. We want to plug you in, baby. So definitely. <laughs> I'm like, I uh, need to be on, on your podcast at some point. Listen, Sim. Hey. <laughs> Look, send Maria your information, right? And, and we'll definitely share okay. it with our people. Okay. In fact, I know someone already okay. asked about it already. So um, drop it in the chat and we'll share yeah, the, it with people um, out here. The women in, as, as soon as my graphics, with the graphics, I'll make sure I get it okay. out to you. Okay. Okay. All right. No, we want to, and I've got, some we want to, we want to show you love. We want to show you some love. So, Sounds all right. Good. No, I'm glad. No, seriously, I, I'm glad you came on because so people are hiding back here. I'm like, how am I supposed to know that I can help people if they're hiding? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not hiding at all. <laughs> okay. Good. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's cool there's email. Cool cool Shoot a message. Okay. Service at govconscience.com. Got it. That's it. All right. Sweet. All right, all right guys. Have a night. It's happy hour Thanks. somewhere. Take right? care. <laughs> I need to be in Florida yeah. with y'all. You don't want to be here, girl. You gotta have on a face well, mask, a bodysuit. No, no, ne never mind, never mind. You don't want to be. Here. You gotta have one of the bodysuits. In in normal times. Okay, I normal would times. Be there, yes. There with y'all. Yes. But right now. Times. Right. Right. Okay. No, thank you. All right. So it's funny. Um. She looks like she's going in and out again. I don't know why. But yeah, so we'll keep go back. Me off. I don't know why it does either. It's on my on my phone. It's spinning okay. around you. But that's okay. We have the info, so yeah. we're good. We have it. So we we we're gonna check you out. We're gonna follow you, and um, maybe we could plan something. All right, let's go back because someone asked me about the question about starting a business with no employees, and they brought that up last night. By the way, thank you, Lashana, for the information. We're going to share it with everyone in our circle. You know, what I tell people, for me, when I, because um, they asked us in the group, what did I do? And by the way, yes, to answer your question, this will be saved on our Instagram. So you will be able to go back and see this. I learned that uh, last week. Thank you, Justin, for teaching me uh, how to save stuff. But, you know, one of the, when I ever, people are asking me, Eric, how did you, how do you start? an organization, right? And hire people. So for me, the the first time that I did it, um, you know, because I'm in construction, my first hire was always a project manager. So I would find someone who was an expert in the particular area that I wanted to actually focus on. And that person, I would, you know, find that person was like the expert. And so we'll go back to, let's say, steel buildings. And when I decided to get into the steel building arena, um, it wasn't like my choice to do steel building. So, so you know, my idea was to, it's like, okay, I wanna find a niche market. I don't wanna just do regular construction. How do I determine a niche that I wanna get into? Because I knew from understanding how the construction businesses work that it would take a long time to actually ramp up and grow because of bonding and, and those types of things. And if I was to work as a subcontractor, I could grow my organization much faster. So in, in doing that, and we'll, and by the way, I see your questions out there. So we'll, we'll talk about um, the RFQ stuff and we'll talk about micro contract stuff. But when, um, so when I was doing that, I said, okay, I, I went out and I started talking to people and letting them know, hey, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a general contractor, but I want to get into a niche marketplace. And and just talking to people, sharing my ideas, an uh, older gentleman told me about metal buildings and steel buildings. And he was the one that first came to me and he said, hey, look, you know, most of my life I've done steel buildings and it's been it's done what, right by me. He's taking care of my family and a lot of my other friends uh, also did steel buildings. And at the time, I didn't even know what metal buildings or steel buildings was. And what happened was he said, OK. You know, if you're interested, I'll be glad to show you how to do it. So an older person really took me under their wings. And he was the one that helped me 
uh, actually set up with my the manufacturer of the buildings. He was the one that vouched for my experience because he agreed to put up his experience. And he had like 30 years of experience. And then again, I had made money doing a consult as a consultant. So I had money saved up, but he put up the experience and I knew how to do government contracts. So for me, I knew how to do the government contract piece. He had the experience piece. And then what happened was he was able to help me become a supplier for Seco Metal Buildings, which again, I didn't even know who the suppliers were. I didn't know it was a good supplier from a bad supplier. Like I had no idea. And he said, look, this is one of the largest metal building suppliers in the country. There's really, uh, there was three or four like major metal building suppliers. They're one of the big four. And he literally took me to the supplier. He vouched for me. He knew the regional managers. He knew the district managers. And he literally was like, I'm going to represent this organization. And I'm going to be the one that ensures that the buildings are compliant and that they actually do it the right way. And so he walked me, literally just walked me right in. And he's the one that got me uh, signed up with them as a distributor of their buildings. And he got me registered. And then from there, I had an account manager, an account rep. And the account, believe it or not, when you do like say metal buildings and you, you become a distributor, the, the account rep, they did all of my estimating. So they literally, I would take them a set of drawings and they would do the takeoffs they would do the estimating for me as that was like part of their service. So again, remember, I know nothing about steel buildings, nothing like zero. And they took, I was able to get like, I don't have any here in this particular office, but in my other offices, I have like all my drawings and stuff. And I was able to take, so when I got my first like bid or job, they gave me like, you know, you get this whole stack of drawings, like blueprints, right? And I took, gave it to the guy and they, the whole SECO of the company, they have an engineering department, they've got estimators, they, they, they have all that stuff. And they were able to give me a detailed breakdown of all of the materials I needed, how much they cost, and they gave me a quote. And shortly after that, that I became a distributor, and this is what I tell people, you know, once you set your mind to something, you write it down and you, and you start work, you know, it becomes a goal, it becomes actionable, then like the world conspires to help you. And it was short after that time that there came a job for a metal building on the same military base that I had been working on for the previous three years. And again, I had been working as a consultant for other like 8A companies. So I had never actually done a single, not, not one job as my company, not one, zero. I literally, so it's, it, it, I went from this older guy who was like, I mean, he was like ready out the door, retirement age. Like you would be so surprised how many people that are retired or semi-retired will be happy to reach back and help you out there. It, it doesn't matter what industry they're in. Um, in fact, I was talking to Pierce, which is, you know, he turned from a student to a colleague, to a friend last night. He met the guy who invented Java. Like, how cool is that? I was part of Entrepreneur's Organization. And EO, if you don't know about EO, it's the best thing in the world. Once you get your business up past a quarter million a year, um, you can do the accelerator. And once you exceed a million dollars in revenue annually, then you can get into the EO group, which is all of like people like myself and all of these like great people out there who have organizations th who they built up. Not someone that inherited a company, not someone that bought a company. You have to be an actual like, creator, a founder, and you have to own like 51%. So you can't be like your daddy's company that you represent. No, you had to actually be in the grind and start like from the bottom up and understand that organization. And that's the kind of people they want. But going back to the story, when I was in EO and we would have like quarterly meetings with all of us to get together, there was a guy that came to our meeting that was able to partner with the former inventor creator of um, what was that Windows system that came out before Google? There was like one of the Windows operating systems that no longer exists today. Uh, Netscape. You probably don't even know about Netscape. So he literally part was able to partner with the founder of Netscape. I don't think that we all realize or understand or even we, we think about, and when people say think big, right? It's not even to me, it's not even thinking big. It's just uh, not being afraid to reach out and, and talk to people 
who maybe you may be a little uncomfortable with talking to because maybe they don't look like you, maybe don't come from the same place that you come from. But you will be so surprised how many people out there that really, especially again, once they get to an older age, like they've already made money, they've already experienced success. And we all know, or if you don't know, we've all at least read about the joy of giving, right? The joy that you receive by giving and helping others. So a lot of those people, you know, imagine if, for example, let's say you are an ex NBA player and now you're retired, you're out of the league, it's 20 years later or 15 years removed, you're nobody. You can walk in any club, you can walk in any bar and nobody cares. So they're not even relevant anymore. And that's the same thing with a lot of these guys that were once these executives. Today, they're not relevant. And that's, that, and that's kind of what happened to me was I found a guy who at one point had all the success and is not, wasn't relevant anymore. And so, you know, whether he wanted to help a, a younger guy, again, I'm in my 20s, he's in the 60s, or if he just wanted to reach back. And, and, and again, they had the time. He didn't need money. So he didn't charge me nothing. I paid zero. 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 It cost me zero dollars. A lot of people were like, how do I find mentors? How do I find mentors? Look for them. <laughs> Look for them. Look for people who were once relevant that are not relevant today. That's, that would be a great place to start. Go on LinkedIn. Look for people who, again, um, maybe they did something back in the 90s, right? That was like, wow, they were known for. And so, and then reach out to them and say, hey, and again, make sure they're in your industry, your space. And you say, look, you know, I have this idea. I know a little bit about this over here. Um, and so I just need some help, right? Would you be willing to uh, be like on my board of advisors, right? Something simple, no big commitment. And that's how you do it. So for me, the guy set me up, set me up with the accounts, set me up with the distributorship. Uh, I had, and I was able because and I teach this on YouTube free, how to set up supplier credit. So I had supplier accounts with smaller uh, companies like Mobile Manny and some like, uh, what was the name of that company? I would like, it's a company that sold screws and nuts and bolts. I had like $5,000, $10,000 supplier credit accounts. And then now I'm getting into like this metal building. So when I set up with them, I think my initial account, I think the largest supplier credit I had was like 25,000 at the time. And, but again, I was able to apply for supply credit with them. And so what happened was I literally took my account, my supply credit, right? And then when the government came out with this bid, I gave the, the company the drawings, the plans. Remember, I didn't even know how to estimate a steel building. I never did a steel building. I didn't even know how you called the beams. I, I didn't know anything about this stuff. And, I, and we posted this on Instagram recently because I have friends that challenge me sometimes, right? And they're like, man, you got to learn to trade. Like, I got to learn how to fix ACs. I got to learn how to do electrical work. The problem with that is when you learn how to do the actual work, you get sucked back in. When problems arise, when things go wrong, you get sucked back in to actually doing the work and resolving the problem and fixing it. When you don't know how to do the work, you have to learn how to be a leader, you have to learn how to hire a better team. You have to learn how to hire a project manager. You got to learn how to hire high quality people. You got to learn interview skills. You got to learn uh, people management skills. You have to learn a, a no another skill set that's critical to you growing the business. So for me, and, and any organization will teach you this, right? In order to grow and scale, you have to get outside of the business. You can't be the worker. And Lori talks about this on the podcast, right? You have to be outside of the business. You can't be the business. You can't be the organization. And that's what happens, right? You typically, for, for like for programmers out there, right? Like if you're a programmer, if you're an IT guy, like you go in and you're like, these guys screw up. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to fix it. Forget it. I don't, I don't forget it. I'm just going to fix it. And you go in there and you're like, I'm going to fix the code. Now you're sucked back into the organization. Well, I didn't know how to, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. So I had to learn how to find the right people and how to manage them and how to organize them and how to fire them and how to rehire new people. And that's what I did. So going back to the question, how did I start? I, you know, um, we actually, I hired a project manager and believe it or not, and I, and I think this is true in every industry, the project manager had 20 years experience with this. And by the way, he came as a referral from the manufacturer. So again, the manufacturer, 
No, I didn't outsource. I hired them on payroll. They worked for me. Um, the manufacturer recommended me companies, several companies that were already specialized in building these types of buildings. And because the first project was over a million dollars, it was like it was like 1.2 million. The the guy literally, and uh, and I, and I'll tell you another backstory to one of my podcast guests. This happened to her. He decided that it was better for him to work for my company, and then to have his own company because he was struggling trying to find jobs and trying to find projects. So he said, "Look, I will bring my whole crew to come work for you. We'll do all of the work." And you just keep bringing in the contracts, and that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. And so now, let's fast forward to today, right? Let's let me let's bring it up. How is that relevant to today? Like we're going to talk about 2020. Now, I talked about I'm, a few weeks ago. I was saying, you know what? I want to show and prove to people that this can happen again, right? So I'm like, let me, I'm going to challenge myself. So I made a pledge is I'm going to try and go after getting a contract working on the wall. Now I know the wall is very controversial, right? Like, you know, the immigration policies and all that stuff, but it's, it's, it's not really about the wall itself. It was just putting out there like a really big bar to achieve. Right. And like, how do I achieve that bar? And so I'll go back to how is that related today and how is it relevant? Well, it's funny because in the Facebook, I mean, not my Facebook, in, a, in, a, in our private group, right? People say, well, Eric, um, you know, the, everyone believed in me. Like, how, how are you going to do that? And it's funny. No one actually listened and paid attention to what I said, which was, what's the first thing that I did? Anybody that's, that's in our GovCon Giants group, you guys, if you were on that call, you should remember, I said what? I called my friend who is an expert at metal buildings, right? I requested his resume because he has 25, 30 years of metal building experience. He's built sky, not skyscraper. He's built like indoor arenas. He's built 50,000 square foot facilities. He's built indoor soccer facilities, indoor college facilities. He has the track record of building these buildings up. He also has, because of his 30 years of experience, he has teams of people that will come work for him on the drop of a dime. So I'm going to take this guy's information, right? I'm taking his resume and I'm going to put that in the forefront. And so people go, oh man, that's cheating. How is it cheating? This is the same thing I did back when I started doing steel buildings back in 2010 or whatever it was. Same thing, same concept. Any one of you could do that. Any Anyone out there could do it. I was on a call an hour ago with a student of mine, and he said, Eric, how would I get into IT? I said, IT people don't like to bid contracts. IT people don't want to do contracts. IT people want to do IT. So if you can find a way to go out there and identify the opportunities, an IT guy doesn't want to talk to people. They don't want to go out and negotiate deals. They just want their job, like, give me the IT work. So I go, it's easy. I would do the same thing in the IT field. I go out and find someone who's tired of working in corporate America, tired, even though they make $100,000 a year, it doesn't matter. People, a lot of people want a better quality of life. And what I found is all the small businesses that I know, they're able to recruit those kind of people because they're sick of going to meetings all the time. They're sick of corporate, you know, in the, before COVID, in the corporate world, you've got two or three meetings a day and you're fussed. You're like, look, man, I want to work from home some days. I want to be with my family some days. And that's the flexibility that a small business can offer that the corporate world doesn't offer. They want you in the office. And again, you know, there's some uh, more progressive groups out there like Google and some of the new people that are doing that. But at the same token, right, there's people out there that um, that they just want to, they want to work with a small business and not be tied to 100 hour weeks and so it's not as hard to recruit them as you believe you've probably never tried and again i'll say this again we you know seneca says we suffer twice once in our imagination and once in our reality so again a lot of this is your brain wrestling with yourself about issues that never are going to happen things that are not going to occur and so you find yourself stuck right and battling internally about 
what should I do or how can I do it? Or what? You didn't even try it. Try it. Try it. Okay. And and so now, right, when I, when I put that out there, right, like, okay, I got my guy and I, he's got all this experience, right? And I'm going to put him in the forefront. They're like, oh man, of course you're going to get a wall contract. Well, wait a second. You could have did the same thing. This guy is sitting home on his beachside house in North Carolina. He's not even working. He's not working. I called him up and I was like, hey, I said, look, I said, do me a favor. I said, send me your resume. I was like, what for? I said, oh, I'm doing a little experiment I want to work on. He's like, all right, cool. I'll send you my resume. So he shot me the resume. And then he called me up to me. He's like, Eric, what's your experiment? He didn't even, I was like, just send me a resume. I was like, oh, I'm just experimenting some stuff. So he shot me his resume and he's like, well, Eric, by the way, what are you doing with my resume? And I go, oh, I said, um, <laughs> I said, I'm going to try to get a contract on the border wall. He was like, oh, okay, let me know how it goes. That's it. We've already discussed the fact that he's like, Eric, if you need 100 guys, 200 guys, I can pick up the phone and call and get you 100 workers, 200 workers out there. He doesn't want to do paperwork. He wants to be in the field. He wants to manage the crews. He wants to manage the team. He doesn't want the contracts in his name because he doesn't want the responsibility and the headache of collecting the money and paying the people. There are people out there that really, they have the opposite skill sets of you and they're looking for someone like you to come in and compliment them. And I, I just think a lot of us, we're not thinking along that manner. We're, we're, putting our, we're putting ourselves out. We are putting ourselves down also because we are not giving ourselves enough credit for the skills that we have the abilities that we have, all the intangibles that, that we, we don't, we, we see other people and we think that maybe somehow they have an advantage over us. You know, it's funny because even, um, I just, actually, I just downloaded, it's not, he's not called 50 Cent anymore, but his book is called Curtis Jackson's book, Hustle Hard or something like that. And in his book, and I'm going to make a YouTube video about this because I really, it was like, it hit home. He says, people are complaining about people who have privilege, right? And people who, um, they have the privilege, right? And you're saying they went to better schools, they may have better education, they may have better connections. And he said, what happens is when you have adversity in your life, you have much more different ways of handling a situation and resolving issues. And the people who've always had the privilege, those persons, the first thing that something goes wrong, they don't know how to handle it, right? And they don't know how to come from out of it. So so again, to me, this whole thing, and again, it's the same thing when, when, when Jay-Z was on The Breakfast Club and he's, he said, they asked him about, what do, you do, what do you know about like sports? He's like, everything. What do you know about sports? And he was talking about the guys who were doing, representing the athletes before him, right? Those persons, they did the same playbook, right? They didn't do anything for the athletes. They didn't do anything at all for our athletes because why was it so many athletes got these $90 million contracts, $50 million contracts, $80 million contracts, and ended up broke. They weren't teaching them money management skills. They weren't even holding back money to help these guys. They weren't helping them with their financials. All they were doing was getting contracts, and then they would do the same playbook, like you said, go to Nike or Reebok, do an endorsement deal, and they got their check, and then they were out. So we need to think about the fact that, you know what, you coming from a position of struggle, hardship, challenges, obstacles, actually gives you strategic advantages over people who did not because they only have one way, one formula, one playbook, right? You have at your, inside your arsenal, a whole toolbox of ways to maneuver, to navigate, to get through. And I think that's one of the reasons why for me, like I said in the group, and I'll say it again, there, there's nobody on here that's on this chat that I can't get a contract for. And for me, I don't think getting a contract is the hard part. I think Fulfilling the contract, doing the work, that's the hard part, right? Delivering excellence, uh, over, you know, overperforming, that to me is the challenge. It's not actually getting the work because the same formula holds true, right? Um, identify the problem, put together a team to solve the problem, present your solution, right, at a reasonable price. And, like, the government's going to, they're going to award you the opportunity. Like, that's, it's just the way it works. And, and again, I know, like, me and Daniel were talking yesterday, he said it's, such a, it's, a, it's a grind. Um, it is. But like what I talk about with Raj, or I talk about with Heather, or I talk about with any of my podcast guests, the grind is worth it. Because at the end of the day, 
right? There's no place. I, I actually have a new, on my book that I'm writing now, I call the government an evergreen customer. So I'm putting out IG, I know y'all gonna try to steal it, but I call them an evergreen customer because just like evergreen content that you write that meant to last forever, the government itself is an evergreen customer because even hospitals close. You know, hospitals are closing. States are running out of money. The local municipalities are running out of money. They got to turn to the government. The government prints money. They literally print money. When things are bad, they spend more. Not less, they spend more. So th there's, I, I, there's no other customer that I can compare it to. And by the way, and speaking with uh, Raj today, who created GovShop, um, he said that he's literally dealing with states that have misappropriated their budgets for PPE. They have given companies money. They have given contracts to new vendors, to unproven vendors, right? And, and so they are now battling. Part of the problem with why they don't have PPE is because they've already misappropriated those monies the first go round by spending money with people who didn't deliver, who gave them faulty products, who took off around with the money. Now, when you hear that, right, I don't want y'all to go screaming and cussing and blaming Trump and all this kind of stuff. Think about, right, hey, that means that these people are so crazy, they could have gave any one of us a contract. You ever thought about that? Like, you guys sit back and say, oh, man, I don't have no experience. How about the fact that they just, all of these states gave all, I think when, when, when um, Nicole was on my show, I think like 30% of all the vendors were unvetted. They had no past performance in the government, no history. To me, that should be hope for all you guys. Not a sense of frustration, right? That should be a sense of hope. You'd be like, dang, this guy got that. Instead of being mad at him or upset, be like, okay, hell, I could do the same thing. <laughs> you know, that's the way that you should think about this stuff, right? It's like, wait a second. I know because y'all sent it to me. Y'all be like, Eric, look, look at this. Look at this thing. Trump gave somebody a contract and they were nobody. This guy was just work for Trump. He gave him a contract. That's one contract for $3 million. The people spent freaking, look it up. Look how much money they spent on PPE. They spent $2 billion or $40 billion, whatever it was. What is $3 million contract? That is garbage. That, look, you know what's funny? I have to say this because this same thing happened when Puerto Rico, they had the hurricanes in Puerto Rico, right? So it's funny. I actually, I was speaking at a, an event. People came on the news, right? Trump gave some electrical company a, a contract in Puerto Rico. Everybody was like, ah, oh, Trump gave his people a contract, the three-man company, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, when y'all, when I'm down here in South Florida, right? When your lights was out, you ain't care who had the contract. Nobody was fussing. When, when y'all power was out and y'all wanted y'all house is cool, you want your fan running and you wanted your internet, you didn't care who got the contract and where it came from. But now the people in Puerto Rico, y'all can sit there and judge. Cool, I got that, I'm past that part. But the same time that they revoked that person's contract, right, for it was like 40, 50 million, the next day the government issued somebody else a $100 million contract and it didn't even make the news. It never made the news. <laughs> it never made the news. So a lot of people out here, right, to me, they're doing this. They're showing you this hand, right, while this hand over here is behind their back. they like, hey, those over here with this, and then they got the hand behind their back, right, doing other stuff. So while y'all distracted with a $3 million contract that Trump gave a former advisor, somebody else just picked up a $100 million contract. Did you guys know that the guy that got the wall contract, he got a billion-dollar contract? Billion, one billion. And y'all talking about a $3 million he gave to a, an advisor? Don't be distracted by the noise, okay? Don't be distracted by what these crazy people are telling y'all on TV. We have people here, like Lori just joined on. Okay, Stacy was on. All right, we have people on here that look like me and look like you, right, that are winning opportunities every day, okay? People in my group, right, last night, They'll tell you, ask them. I showed them my contract we picked up Tuesday. IDIQ, five years. I just talked to my guy, my buddy Paul. By the way, if you want to Google him, Google Paul Morrow and Donald Trump, you'll see him on the stage. Paul, 
He just picked up a contract. He told me he just picked up a Sabre contract. Today he called me, told me we picked it up. So all of my people, right, we're, we're, out here, we're getting contracts. We're not being distracted by all this noise that's on, on the news, 24-hour news cycle. Their job is to sell you news. My job is to encourage you, to support you, to be here to let you know this is real and to show you as an a example, right, someone as an example to demonstrate what's possible for everyone else that's on the other side of this coin. That's, that's my job, okay? I, I show the contracts. I show you the contracts. I show the emails, okay? I show you where it came from. And by the way, no, you don't need 8A. You don't need 8A. You don't need certifications, okay? We had someone that was in our group last night, and this goes. This is a very good point, right? Stephanie, she was in the group. She went to a conference. She's a veteran-owned business. She's a woman, served her country. She went to a veteran-owned conference, met someone at the conference. Now, when she met the person at the conference, the person, she told him she was doing janitorial. No past performance. She made the decision after going to conferences two years in a row. She looked around the room and saw what people were doing. And she said, you know, I see a lot of women doing construction. I see people in IT. And she said, where can I fit in? And she made the decision, right? She made the conscious decision to say, you know, I'm going to do janitorial. So she met a guy at the conference. And, 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 and again, I mean, you could say she's blessed. She was lucky, whatever the case may be. I disagree. I think that, like everything else, I tell people, you know, um, when you put it on paper and it's whatever you want to call it, your vision board, your goals, whatever, the, it's, it just, the world conspires to help you. She went to an event, met a guy, and then he said, hey, there's an opportunity coming up for some janitorial work. And uh, within, I think it was three weeks or a month, something like that, it was in a very short window of time, he called her up with a janitorial contract. Now, the company was negotiating the contract with the government, so it was a sole source. So she was negotiating with it. She told the guy, she told the guy, Colin, were you on last night when Stephanie talked about this? I know Daniel's here, Maria's. Uh, she told the guy she did not have the money. She didn't have the money. She didn't have the staff. She didn't have the money. Okay. And he said, that's okay. Don't worry about it. And from the time that he talked about the contract, to the time they had to start, she had to or she had to organize 40 people, four zero. She had to hire 40 people in three days to start working on this contract. And she did not have the money. As a subcontractor, right? I just did an interview with Heather Bleas out of um, she's up there in, in Brunswick, Maine, staffing company, okay, and uh, same thing. She was on the 2017 Inc. 5000 list, number 28. She had 9,000% growth. She never worked as a prime. She was a subcontractor to the large firms. You do not have to be a prime. 8A and, and all these, and, these, and so like the, forget, but we said, we're talking about 8A here. When I do, I, again, I've never had 8A. No one's ever hired me because I had 8A contract. Like they didn't hire me for any kind of, when I did my, my company, when I did steel buildings, I worked underneath 8A contractors. Okay. But I didn't, I wasn't the 8A contractor. They hired me because I did steel buildings and I was good at it. And I understood the government world. And that's the same reason. That's the same mentality that I'm taking with this whole wall contract. I'm not going to the wall contract saying, give me a contract because I'm a minority. What did I tell you guys I did? I found one of the top guys in the country that knows how to do metal buildings. So I'm leading in with an expert who's got history. We can mobilize a job. Yes, thank you, LaShonda, being a sub, less headache. You, you have, a lot of times, we don't have everything it takes to be a prime, unless it's a smaller project. Many of you out here who are asking these questions, you're not going to be able to be a prime contractor in a lot of this stuff anyways. The quickest route into this marketplace is a sub. A sub. That's like you can start tomorrow. If you're in construction, all right, tomorrow. Construction. If you're in construction tomorrow, you can reach out to any Alaska Native corporation and they have work for you. 
All right, Lori, listen. Thanks. I know you got to go. You're probably still at the office. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Lori. Um, but you can reach out to any. So, so, for example, the same thing with Stephanie. She's janitorial. She didn't go out and get that contract. Somebody else had already done the legwork, the business development. They did, they did the, they had already made all the relationships with the government, all this stuff. They had already did all of that. So, so those people had already done all, all of the capture management, all the stuff that I teach people to do. The big organization had already went and did all of that for her. Now they came back with the opportunity and all that she had to do was basically attach herself to them and mobilize the people. There's value in that. When, when the Alaska Native Corporation hired me, my company, and they, they were working on a $20 million project, and they knew, right, even they knew I was going to be a pass-through, right? So pass-through is where they give me the contract and I give the contract to another company. Um, they knew, right, that I was a pass-through because I didn't have the ability to do this $5 million contract. They still wanted me on board because, and I said this last night, I'll say it to you guys on IG, um, they wanted me on board because I understood government contracting. And I remember the senior project manager who's like one of the partners of the organization, he said to me, Eric, look, I want you in the middle because these guys, they don't know how to do government contracts and I don't have time to babysit them or teach them how to do it. Just like that. It's a $20 million project. Do you think they want you to go out there and screw that up? So even though the people I was hiring knew how to do the physical work, the actual work, right? They can get the work done. They didn't know how to manage a government contract. They didn't know how to administrate a government contract. They didn't know how to do any of that kind of stuff. So they needed me to help facilitate the actual contract because a lot of times what, what we all as small businesses fail to realize is in the government space, the administrative part is where your money starts and where your money stops. It ain't the work. It's the administration. If you don't have your paperwork together, that's probably why your friend did not get paid on time because they didn't do their paperwork. They didn't turn on it. They didn't turn it in. They're, they made a mistake, right? That's probably why when you hear a story about somebody didn't get paid on time, the first thing I said is they paper probably weren't right. That's my go-to in response. If you, if someone come tell you a story about they didn't get paid on time, I want y'all to go back, push back and say, did you have your paperwork together? Because Eric said, you probably didn't have your paperwork together. That's just facts. Like they won't tell you that piece. And so for me, the, the actual, for me, what happened was, uh, the company would rather me be in place to make sure that all the paperwork was done because it would then not just affect us from getting paid, it would affect everybody from getting paid. And everyone on that contract, there was like 20 subcontractors, right? All of our money was tied to making sure this guy got paid. So that was what happened. All right, it's telling me I got two minutes remaining. Um, so someone said, do you get paid up front? No, you do not get paid up front in contracts. Uh, there is no upfront portion. You have to get supplier credits. Um, now, again, I, last week we had someone come on and did micro purchases. So micro purchases, like at like really small thresholds, yes, they were paying upfront. But the stuff that I, you know, I don't do, when I say, and micro is different terms. This person was doing micro at like the state and, and local level contracts. So they were even like micro, micro. Micro at the federal level, I don't remember the numbers. I think it's below 20,000 or 15,000. So that's really, again, at a state level, that's not a micro. So it's all uh, relative to uh, whether you're referring to like a state micro versus a federal micro. They've got different thresholds. There's no, and the same thing with small business standards. All of it's different depending on whether you're talking about state, local, or federal contracts, right? So on a, like on a super micro, for example, Maria, uh, we have a contract with Library of Congress, and on the Library of Congress, they ordered something small, like, uh, so, I, I don't know, it's like 500 bucks, whatever. They Yeah, they gave us a credit card, and we shipped it. But at the when you talk about 25000 which, again, for us is still micro, but not by definition, no, they're not going to give you a $25,000 or f check up front to deliver that item. So, but the, but, the, but the thing is, you can figure all that out. We talk about supplier credit. Oh, there you go. Maria's micro with the Coast Guard is six seventeen hundred bucks. So, but yeah, we talk about all that. It looks like I've got twelve seconds left. I, the thing is counting down on me. How, Justin, how do I stay on this thing longer? Why does this thing kick me off after an hour? I got ten seconds. Hey guys, I'm gonna.
I'm, I'm not signing out intentionally. The looks like IG is kicking me off in five, four, three, two, one. So thanks for tuning in. We're